All right, so this is how this course works. It's online. I go to my favorites. I got this thing bookmarked. I go and I have a look at it anytime I want so I can revisit it. This is what it looks like when it's opened up. Uh, the navigation uh, tabulations are on the side. You go down through. Okay, so now let's start beginning at the beginning. The purpose. The purpose of this is so you can learn how to apply film payroll rules. Now specifically in this course it's called SAG payroll for day performers and day performers in this codified basic agreement are called Schedule A. And three assumptions. First off everything I'm working on here is for theatrical production but we're looking at the SAG codified agreement for authority. It's never what I say, it's what the agreement says. And within each section they have TV rules and theatrical rules in the same section. So not to worry, you're going to figure it all out. Once you know theatrical, you know exactly where to look for the same, similar problem with TV. All right, so now we're assuming we got a payroll service. The other thing, so we're not learning how to do employee withholdings and producer contributions. We're never no mind on that stuff. Um, although we do, I do have something sag fringes in the appendix. And again, I'm assuming that you know very little about sag payroll. Okay, let's begin at the index. Now the index, I've got it bookmarked here. See, so if you want to quickly go somewhere from the index, you can. You also have the navigation panel on the side here. You can just move it down and go wherever you want. Um, you can also use these arrows here to advance one at a time. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the index. Now, first of all, we have a ton of forms and a ton of good material here. I'm just going to go to this bookmark section here. Now here we have a section reference on the SAG codified basic agreement for every situation. Um, the one that most people are aware of is overtime. Well that's section 9 in the SAG Schedule A part of the agreement. Um, you know, back here I actually uh, give you a full SAG CBA download for your reference. So you just click on it. Every time it's highlighted like that, you click on it, you download the great big SAG CBA, or I've cut it down. Here's the big SAG CBA here, and you can tell over here, um, Schedule A, B, C, you can see all these schedules. I mean, this is like a 900-page document, um, So, but I still wanted everyone to have everything. But what I've done too is I've cut out just all the Schedule A rules and I've highlighted and made notes and things like that as well. Um, now in addition to um, all of the agreements and things that are there and uh, you also get a ton of everyday forms uh, that you would need. SAG contract for theatrical and TV, day performer, if you're doing low budget, got that form. All the forms related to payroll are in here. Uh, the last workshop I did was in Michigan, so I got examples of certificate of non-residency from Michigan, withholding agreements. These are all standard state to state. They just got different nuances involved. I have box rentals. I mean, I probably have about 40 forms here all together. Taft-Hartley, Final Cast List, Accident Report. All these things are very handy, and then you can just download them and put them in your, on your hard drive. Um, all right, I'm getting away from the index here. So now, that's materials. And then, once we get past Section A, B, C, we're into this what I called a natural progression of events. We have a mocked up guy named Joe Gloggs. He gets an audition. How do you pay him? Okay, he gets hired. He's got a fitting. How do you pay him? Travel. He's got to leave from Los Angeles to Atlanta. Set up the time card. The assistant directors record the times on these forms called SAG production time reports, also called an Exhibit G. So I've got an Exhibit G here. Well, he's got overtime. How do you pay it? He's, um, there's, there's very specific rest periods that cast must have. If you violate that, it's called a rest period violation. And there's a fine, a penalty. Well, how do you pay that? And also with meal periods, if you don't comply with feeding, in certain, feeding the cast in a certain time period, you get a penalty. How do you pay it? Uh, time per diems, there's the IRS. They want it recorded in a very specific way. Well, I'll show you how to do that. There's a convention that's pretty standard in how to assign account codes. I'll show you how to do that. 
And then finally is the big kahuna, the practice. Now I've set up seven cast here. They travel to Atlanta to work. I've got all the forms involved. Let's just go and have a look. So here's what you're going to find. Is um, First off, I've got the deal points for every every one of these seven guys. You just click here and you get all the deal points. It shows uh, what their rate is, when they're supposed to travel, when they're supposed to work, just like you would get deal points on, an, on a regular show. And these are five ex exhibit G's, like five different days, and I've set it up in one Excel workbook with tabs on the bottom, just as if it was the real thing. And then you transcribe them to blank time cards, and I've set them up with their character names and character number. And then you work on them. And I've given you uh, one download here of all the Schedule A payroll rules. I've basically recapitulated everything here. Caps capsulated is probably a better word. And uh, put it on uh, a single page. And, and also I have the exact references. And then here is the seven completed time cards on one workbook. And there you can review it, do it yourself, check against mine. These are basically my calculations. Um, and then we've got a bunch of appendices. And in the appendices is many things. I won't go there right now. All right, so we've got navigation down, the assumptions down, uh, the index, and um, oh, the other thing is that at the beginning and end of every section, I have what um, what I call an introductory video. So everyone knows about overtime. I'll go there, and you'll see this intro video here. You click on it, and you'll go to my uh, screencast.com website, and you'll be able to watch and hear a video where I'm introducing this topic, and. Um, for that section and you'll hear what I have to say and see and see it I'm trying to highlight what I feel are the most important parts or the trickier parts of each section all right so then we click the back arrow here to go back and um, uh, at the end of each section so now let's just go and have a look at overtime basically in here I travel you through every section I ask you to check the rules these are Pulled, I uh, actually cut out of the big codified agreement just the rules in overtime, and you download them. I've got a particular thing involved with travel here that uh, affects his overtime, so I'm saying C section 2 part Q, and you can download that. Um, every step of the way, I walk you through what you can do next, what you should do next, and um, you do it, and at uh, one point, um, here I give you my time card that I did for Joe Gloggs for his overtime for that week. Oh, I missed the whole point here. The whole point is like, okay, here's the quiz video. So you just click on it, the video comes up, and now in the video itself is embedded a little quiz. They're just multiple choice questions, not that big a deal. Um, if you want to have continuing professional education, you need to do this. If you don't want to have continuing professional education, you don't have to do it. If you want to do it to stay in touch, just do it. So here you click one, it'll tell you this is the right answer here, but let's see if I click the wrong answer and I go submit, it says incorrect C section 9A. Done. You click done. This pops up. Okay, you reach the end of the questions for this video and uh, your answer is ready to be sent. So you send them. Now here you need to have Outlook Express or Mozilla Thunderbird, you know, some kind of a email system where the email will pop up automatically, um, and then it'll it'll s send it away for me, and I'll um, I can mark them. Now if you get something wrong and you want to make 100% for your CPE, just do it again and send it to me again. All right, so now here we you're brought back after the after the test, you're right brought right back to the same place we started. All right, so I think that gives you a fair rundown of everything that's required. You have tons of practice. You're asked to do something every single section. It's not just read and be mundane. Uh, I try and keep it as lively as possible. And of course, at the end, you get the big practice session, and that's that's the important bit because then you get a chance to do it, and you get a chance to see mine, and you get a chance to well, apply the rules. All right, I hope that helps, and I hope you take the online course. Thanks.